Hundreds of years before the coming of the Christ, God's people were in a foreign land. Susa. Its ruler, a man who owned land from India to the Mediterranean, among the most powerful of kings known to man, King Xerxes. In his kingdom, they loved a girl whose name would be one the world would never forget. Hello, everybody. Today, we are in week two of our Esther series in Connect Groups, and we are looking at the topic of how do we live out our faith in the world. And it would be awesome if you followed along in your study guide, if you have one, and at the end, we are going to go into a discussion around the topic. And so to kick off, one of the first characters in the book of Esther that we see is King Xerxes. Now, he was the king of Persia at that time, and he was a very powerful and influential man who had a mass of empire following him. In the opening chapter, King Xerxes displays his power, wealth, and majesty by throwing a lavish party. If you had to think of the most lavish party or event or wedding that you've ever been to and times it by about a hundred, you might come close to the party that King Xerxes was throwing for his people. This was a party where all the people in Susa were invited to come and be impressed by the king and his empire's wealth and extravagance. And this was a party without restrictions. It had the feeling of everyone's invited, do whatever feels good to you in the moment and come and be impressed by the king. Now the Israelites, who were God's chosen people, were also living in Persia at this time, and they did not fit into this culture. They were very much the minority group, and they struggled to fit in. This way of life was very foreign from the way that God had called them to live, and they were outsiders whose faith morality and lifestyle choices were not respected by the people of Persia. I remember in grade eight, it was very popular in my grade to go to youth and I invited all my friends and there were a whole bunch of us that came in grade eight and nine. It was the place to be on a Friday night. But when we hit grade 10, things changed a lot. One by one, my friends stopped coming to youth and they started to get into other things like drinking and dating and partying. And I found often that at break time, when they were going on about what they had done on the weekend, I didn't have much to contribute to the conversation because the way that I was choosing to live according to the Bible and according to my faith was so contrary to the way that they chose to live. I remember Matric, my last friend who was still coming to church with me, told me that it was just too hard to serve the Lord. And it was a very isolating time for me in high school as I had to just stand by um, my values. And so I can imagine that it was really difficult for the people of God to live in Persia in a culture that was so opposite to theirs. And I think we can apply that to our lives. We also live in a culture which is at odds with our faith. It may be in our school environment or our work environment or our family environment or our friendship circles. And so we pose the question, how do we live out our faith in this type of world on a daily basis? Firstly, um, we recognize the end result of this world. This particular party that King Xerxes was throwing didn't end well for him. He invited Queen Vashti to come and parade in front of all of his guests, uh, his drunken guests, and despite the kind offer, she turned it down and she didn't come. And so the party didn't turn out the way that King Xerxes hoped for, and he got really angry and embarrassed in the process. Historians tell us that this party was to gain political support because King Xerxes wanted to lead a military campaign into Greece. But a few years later, King Xerxes was properly defeated by the Greeks. And today the Persian Empire is in ruins. Despite it being so powerful and wealthy back in the day, there's nothing to show for it now. And the Bible tells us that ultimately that is the way of the world. In 1 John 2, Verse 16 and 17, it says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. 
the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I remember being 18 years old and getting my driver's license and my dad got me a car as soon as I had my license and I was proud as punch of this car. I loved it so much and I couldn't believe the independence that it allowed me and we organized at the church for the youth group an amazing race where clues were put all across the um, city of Peter Maritzburg and you had to find a driver and a car and a whole bunch of youth kids got in the car and we would race around the city. I wasn't meant to be in the race that night because I'd actually organized all the clues, but I came across a group of six um, boarders who didn't have a parent, and so I thought, with my new nice car, let me pack them into my car and take them and be the Good Samaritan. Now, keeping in mind there were seven of us in the car, it was raining that night, and I felt pretty invincible in my nice little car, and so I was speeding through Peter Maritzburg. It was not going to end well for me. And I was driving down the one road, and a car that was going far slower than I was turned in front of me, and so I last minute had to slam on brakes, and my wheels locked, and I ended up skidding a very long way, and in the end, hitting not one, not two, but three cars that were parked on the side of the road. I was absolutely devastated about my car. The boys in the car were sad that we couldn't win the race. I was only fixated on my car and the damage that I had done, not only to my car, but to three other cars. And I called my dad up, crying hysterically about the car, and he arrived, and I fully intended to uh, pay for my uh, wrongdoings and to accept the consequences, and I thought he was going to come down on me so hard for being so irresponsible. And I remember all he did was whisper in my ear, it's all going to burn, my dear. And I just remember thinking in that moment that he truly believed that actually the things that we have, our wealth, our possessions, really in the long run don't matter and we place such value on them, but in the end, only God remains and only people go to heaven. Earthly kingdoms come and go, but God's word remains forever. Secondly, to answer the question of how do we live out our faith in this type of world is that we need to know to whom we belong. You see, King Xerxes was a king that had every reason to feel secure. He had financial power, he had political power, he had military power, and yet he was a very insecure man, and he, in his leadership, was paranoid. And we see this outworking because the people around him were very... um, influencing on him. They were able to influence him very easily and they were able to sway him and manipulate him and they often had evil intent in their hearts. And for us as Christians living in this world, how much more important is it that we find our security and our identity in Christ so that we are not swayed by the people of this world? In John 15 verse 19, Jesus speaks to us and he says, If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. To be chosen, the definition of that is to be selected as the best or most appropriate. And as I prepared for this session, it blew my mind to think that Christ chose me and chose you to be adopted as his sons and his daughters, as his very best choice. I never truly understood uh, what adoption was or how it could impact a life until a few years ago I was working in a government hospital and in the dead of winter one day the police arrived at the hospital and they came with a three day old baby girl who was absolutely beautiful but her mom had abandoned her on the railway tracks and left her for dead in the heart of winter and she had been plucked up off those railway tracks and brought into the hospital and from the moment I met I started to pray that God would provide her with a family. And about a week after she had come into the hospital, a group of us were praying and it was Father's Day and I was praying, saying, Lord, provide her with a father and a mother and a a home where she can grow up. And that very evening, a dad in the community called me and he asked me whether she was up for adoption and how he could go about adopting this beautiful little baby girl. And 
when I see her now and she's eight years old and she's beautiful and uh, she has been adopted into a family, she has a mom and a dad and a big brother, but not only that, she has a, the opportunity to go to university one day, she has a hope and a future. And it's only then that I truly understood what Christ did for me in plucking me off the railway tracks and putting me into the family of God where I am a daughter of the King. And that is what he has done for each of us in this world. We are not alone. We have not been left for dead. We have been adopted into the family of God and we can find our security in the fact that we are his sons and daughters. No matter what we face, we can stand in confidence because we belong to Christ. And thirdly on the question of how do we live out our faith in this world is that we're not called to please the world. You see, King Xerxes' main objective in his party was to please his guests. And so when Queen Vashti didn't want to come out and parade in front of his drunken guests, it did not please the guests. And so that is why he got so angry and bitter and disappointed in that moment. But in Galatians 1 verse 10, Paul says, For am I now trying to persuade people or God? Or am I striving to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And as I pondered the question in this verse, am I striving to please people for my own life? To answer honestly, a lot of the time I really am striving to please people. But Paul highlights two important things in this verse, and that is that living for man's approval is futile, and you cannot serve Christ and please man. I have a friend who um, took over a business in Corona times last year, and he put in an application to be part of a tender, which was a very big deal. And in the process, the person who was deciding who gets the tender, which would have been a very lucrative one, said to him that if you pay me a kickback, um, I will award the tender to you. And I saw him really wrestling with the decision because he was a new business owner. This is not the time to be turning down work. Um, Having this guy on his side would mean a lot of future deals to come. And it would be pleasing to the guy asking for a kickback to pay him that money to get the tender. But he really came to the conclusion that it might please man and it might help him in the short term, but it wouldn't please God. And so in a huge step of faith, he turned down uh, the guy who was asking for the kickback and he never got the deal and he really wondered how God would provide for him. But I've seen over this past year how God has sent him so much work that he's run off his feet and he really in that step of faith was saying, God, I believe that you are the provider and I long to please you and I will not look to man for their approval and for their provision. And how amazing to see God be faithful when this guy has chosen to take a stand for righteousness, even though it didn't win the approval from the person offering him the kickback. And so in conclusion and in summary, how do we live out our faith in this fallen world is firstly to recognize the end result of this world, that it's all gonna burn one day and the things that we place such value on now will not last apart from the word of God. Secondly, it was to know to whom we belong, that we have been adopted as sons and daughters of Christ and in him we can find our security and belonging. And thirdly, that we need to strive to please God and not man because it's impossible to do both. We are going to go into our group discussion now, and so I hope that you have a great time as you share thoughts around this topic. Thank you.